Joe's business had the following assets and liabilities as on 31st March 2011. So Joe's year ends on 31st March. We have non-current asset liabilities due within one year. If the liabilities are due within one year, these would be current liabilities. Then we have current assets and liabilities due over one year. Over one year means uh, non-current liabilities. Okay, we have non-current and current liabilities, and we have non and current assets assets as well. Uh, what we need to find, we need to find capital. Capital means owner's capital. Owner's capital is also known as owner's equity. Okay, and then we need to find capital employed. First of all, we need to find capital. The formula for capital is simple accounting equation: assets minus liability is equal to capital. Then, when we talk about assets, there are two types of assets: whether they are non-current in nature or whether they are current in nature. These move. Both would be included in the calculation of capital. Then the liabilities, we have two types of liability, whether they are non-current liabilities or current liabilities, this will both be included in the calculation of capital. Now in this question, we have non-current assets worth 120,000 and the current asset that we do have are 35,000. So non-current liabilities are over one year, that is 50,000 and current liability, the liability is due within a year, that is 25. Now the total assets are 155. And the total liability, if we add up both of these two, these are 75. Now the final answer is 80,000. 80,000 is basically owner's capital or owner's equity. This means that out of the total 155,000 assets that we do have, 75,000 is a liability. Uh, this means we are left with 80,000. 80,000 is what remains in the business that belongs to the owners. After deducting all of the liabilities or after paying off all of the liabilities, the thing that we are left with, and the owner's interest in the business, owner's stake in the business is basically owner's capital. Then after owner's capital, we need to calculate capital employed. What does capital employed mean? Capital employees, my dear students, mean uh, that the total amount of capital being invested in the business, either by owner, such as owner's capital, or the amount that is being invested by outsiders, such as loan. Okay, so capital employed basically means two things. One is owner's capital and one is non-current liability. So there are two methods of calculating capital employed. One formula is total assets minus current liability. Now, if I deduct total liabilities from total assets, I will be left with owner's capital. Now, what I need to do, I need to deduct current liability only. Why? Because I do not need to deduct non-current liability because I need to keep non-current liability with myself. Okay. So instead of deducting total liability from total asset, I will be deducting current liability only. Now I have already found out uh, the total assets. Uh, there is another method as well for this and another method for finding capital employed is owner's capital plus non-current liability. Okay. Owner's capital plus non-current liability. Now let us go for the first formula and first things first, total assets are 155,000. We have already found out total assets and the current liability that we have is liabilities due within a year in the question that is 25. 155 out of the 155 assets, current liability is only 25, then the, owner, uh, then the capital employed is 130,000. Now let us move to another formula that is owner's capital and non-current liability. Owner's capital is the amount invested by owner and non-current liability is the amount invested by outsiders which are not part of the business. Okay. So the owner's capital that we have, we have already found owner's capital that is 80,000. If we have already found owner's capital, we can use the second formula. And the non-current liability is a liability due after more than one year that is 50,000. If I add up all of these, both of these, I will be left with capital employment. Now, as you saw, uh, there is uh, two methods to calculate capital employed. One is total assets minus current liability and another one is owner's capital plus non-current liability. So whatever information permits, uh, the examination question permits, you can use the formula accordingly. Now, uh, as you may be aware that owner's capital and capital employed, if we compare both of these, capital employed would always be greater than owner's capital. In this question as well as you can see owner's capital is 80 and capital employed is 130. Why? Because the capital employed calculation also includes outsider's capital that is loan. Okay. But if there is no loan in the business and if we are, have not taken any sort of loan as such as non-current liability means owner's capital and capital employed would both be the same. 
okay if there is no non current liability it can be the same or capital employed would always be greater there cannot be any scenario where capital employed is less than the owner's capital this cannot happen okay now let us move further part to the question we have a table we need to complete this table and the transaction that we are being given are stated here during the month of april jo recorded the following transaction basically we are being given with four transactions and it is easy we need to just complete this table we need to identify book of original entry we need to see which amount will be debited which account will be credited we do not need to write amount here therefore the examiner has given a sample entry for us and we need to find effect on capital now let us discuss the first transaction as you can see in the question the question states bought goods on credit from henry to onwin whenever we buy a goods on credit so the book would be purchase day book or purchase journal so whenever we are buying goods uh, the entry would be purchase account would be debited and supplier account would be credited okay whenever we are buying goods from someone purchase is always debited why because the asset goes up it is always debited because goods are coming into the business and the uh, Henry is credited. Why? Because Henry, it is a supplier. A supplier would increase by way of credit. Effect on capital. Now, my dear students, capital is only affected by four transactions. Okay. Whenever we are investing something into the business, additional capital investment, this will increase our capital. And whenever we are drawing out something from the business, that is drawing reduces our capital. Uh, whenever we are earning profit, income. Uh, this would increase our capital, and whenever we are suffering from losses or expenses, this would reduce our capital. Now there is no effect on capital in the first of the transaction. Why? Because the capital is affected whenever we sell something. Okay, the capital is not changed whenever we buy something. Okay, whenever we buy something, the profit there won't be any profit, but instead the profit would only be there, or the loss would be incurred whenever we sell something. When we sell for more than that we have paid for. There was a profit, and whenever we are selling for less than we have actually bought for, there would be loss. Then on the second of the transaction, sold goods costing three hundred to Mary for the selling price of five hundred on credit. Uh, whenever we are selling goods on credit, the book would be sales day book or also known as sales journal. So the entry would be sales account would be credited and Mary account would be debited. Why is sales being credited? Because goods are going out of the business. If the asset is decreasing, it would be credited. And why is Mary being debited? Mary is customer and customer is an asset for the business. Asset increases by way of debit. So we have sold the goods which cost us three hundred and we have sold it for five hundred. Therefore, we have earned profit of two hundred and that profit would increase our capital by two hundred dollars. Then on the third of the transaction, we have sent Henry a check for one nineteen full settlement of the debt of two hundred. Uh, whenever we are sending someone a check, this someone would be our supplier, uh, supplier of goods or maybe supplier of services. Whenever we are paying someone through check, so the book would be cash book for all of uh, all of the cash and bank transaction. We use a cash book, and the double entry would be uh, supplier would be debited Henry supplier. Why we are debiting Henry? Uh, previously, when we purchased goods from Henry, we credited Henry because liability was increasing, and now we need to cancel out this liability. We'll be decreasing that liability, and we have paid it through check. So therefore, our bank goes down. And there is another thing as well in this question. And what is that? We need to pay our supplier. We were supposed to pay him two hundred dollar, but instead we paid only one ninety dollar. So we haven't paid the difference. That is ten dollar, and we won't be paying it in a later part of the year. Why? Because there is something written in this question as full settlement. Full settlement means uh, we won't be giving the difference that is left. Okay. If we are uh, settling the account, this means we are asking supplier for discount. And this would be discount received, and discount received is basically income for the business, and income is always credited. Okay, discount received an income, and it would be credited. So we are not uh, uh, we are not being asked to put the values in this dollar value, 
but instead if we would have been asked for to put values the values would be we would be deducting bank by 190 why because we have only paid uh, 190 to the bank and the discount would be ten dollar why because we are paying 190 uh, in settling an account of 200 okay so we'll be debiting henry by a full amount 200 therefore uh, that is we won't be paying the difference ten dollar to us so henry would be debited by the whole amount 200 and the bank would be created by only 190 and the difference ten dollar is discount received that is income okay if the discount receives is income income or profit increases our capital therefore there will be a plus 10 Okay, now let us move to the last transaction. Mary return goods with a selling price of 50. Whenever Mary is returning goods to us, this would be a return inward journal. Return inward or we can also write sales return journal or sales return table. So whenever customer is returning goods to us, the entry would be return inward debit and customer's account would be credited that is Mary. Return inward debit, Mary credit and amount would be $50 in this although amount is not required in these parts and lastly we need to find effect on capital and this is uh, slightly difficult and if you can see uh, that we when we originally sold goods to Mary we earned a profit of $200 okay but we have originally sold the goods to Mary for $500 if Mary would have returned all of the goods worth $500 this plus 200 would become minus 200 this plus 200 would become minus 200 if Mary have returned all of the goods but instead of all of the goods Mary have just returned goods worth $50 okay so we need to find out the amount of profit that we have earned on this $50 of sales now how can we calculate that we can calculate it by way of calculating GB margin how to calculate a margin uh, first of all we will be looking at the original amount of profit original gross profit that we have earned was $200 and the original selling price for this transaction was $500 this means out of the $500 sales that we made we earned a profit of $200 and the profit of $200 on $500 sales would be a 40% profit okay 40% profit we have earned on $500 if we apply 40% will be getting $200 of profit now what we will do with this 40% if you can see that the goods that the uh, customer Mary has returned to us are worth $50 so what we need to do we need to apply a 40% margin to the goods that we have returned from customer that is $50 times 40% so the profit amount is $20 okay so Mary has just returned the goods worth 50 if $200 is the profit that we have earned on the $500 amount what would be the profit on $50 okay if we apply 40% on the $50 the profit that we are left with is $20 okay we can also uh, uh, remember by this example and example is that for example uh, we are selling uh, uh, pencils to Mary okay pencils or markers one of the pencil that we are selling it to Mary uh, is for $50 we are selling one pencil for $50 and we have sold 10 pencils for maybe $500 okay so out of, out of that 10 pencils Mary have just returned one pencil okay if 10 pencils we have sold it for 500 and one for 50 so the problem here arises that how much profit do each pencil contains okay for example if in $500 there is a $200 profit this means on 10 pencils there is a $200 profit then in one pencil we have only earned a profit of $20 so if she had returned only one of the pencils out of 10 sold to her so there would be loss of only $20 okay so I hope my dear students you were able to understood this question